this is the story of three IIT alums, Pranav Goel, Uttam Tekka and Vikas Chaudhary. Founded in 2014, they have managed to not only survive but also thrive, becoming the undisputed on-demand truck king of India. In a space that has seen hundreds of players come and go, the secret sauce of their success has been their persistence with their core thesis and a bit of luck. I'm your host for the week, Pranav. Without much further ado, let's dive deep into today's story, inspired by Samiksha Goel's coverage from The Morning Context. India is a large country and the logistics business is fragmented, split across regions, categories and varied niches. From small value envelopes, to high value phones, to e-commerce shipments in refrigerated trucks, to move time-bound cargo. The intra-city logistics market in India is worth around 30 to 40 billion and barring air freight, almost 90% of the market is unorganized. The addressable market is so vast that it leaves room for multiple players to coexist. And the success of delivery proves the same. For decades, most of these businesses have operated on a scheduled appointment model. That is, until Porter came along with its on-demand Uber for logistics idea. The trio's core thesis was, if it can work for cabs, why can't it work for trucks? They did not create a new market, they just solved for two key problem statements. First, lack of on-spot availability of small trucks in intra-logistics. And second, the lack of transparency in pricing. So a vehicle capable of doing 5 trips a day was doing only 1 to 1.5 trips a day, which is about 30% asset utilization. The trio believed that they could solve the matchmaking problem of these vehicles and push the utilization to over 60% since virtually all the return trips were empty. The drivers used to charge higher because of the uncertainty of getting another trip. But when they were certain of a return trip, they were willing to compromise on the price because they would still make money overall. SMEs, at the same time, got a cheaper deal. Both sides genuinely won. When Porter started out in 2014, investors were gravitating more towards intercity logistics firms like Rivigo and Blackbuck. The founder claims the Porter's rapid part to a 5.5 million Series A led by Sequoia Capital was entirely coincidental and resulted from a conversation at a conference. Ultimately, 2015 witnessed a significant downturn in the venture capital space and investors were unwilling to touch any Uber for X like marketplaces. Eventually, many competitors in this space were forced to shut shop. But it wasn't all luck. Porto made some strategic errors and fixed them initially. First, they hired drivers full time and had to pay their salaries. And second, they started serving big enterprises, which meant payment terms of 60 to 90 days, which massively hurt the cash flow. Porter quickly realized they weren't adding any value in this segment and got out of serving enterprises and fully focused their attention towards SMEs. And that came with two advantages. On-demand deliveries gave them higher margins. Second, and no revenue concentration risk because of a few large clients. Here's a quick learning from the Porter story for entrepreneurs building in the B2B enterprise space. If you have 10 clients, each of them will account for about 10% of your revenue. They know they are important, so they will arm twist you and cause pricing and margin pressures along with an expectation of a key account manager, customizations and more, making it an operationally intensive affair. In 2018, the Hong Kong-based on-demand logistics disruptor Lala Move made an impactful entry into the Indian market. Fueled by substantial financial backing, they disrupted the market dynamics with cashbacks and incentives. Pioneering the inclusion of two-wheelers on their platform grew a significant part of their business. However, as luck would have it, in alignment with the government of India's crackdown on Chinese apps, which affected giants like TikTok, Lala Move found itself in the geopolitical crossfire, forcing them to abruptly exit the Indian market. Porter has now diversified its services, moving into movers and packers, intercity transport, couriers, and two-wheeler deliveries. In the on-demand logistics marketplace, it currently enjoys a leadership position. While there aren't any big organized players left, companies like Uncle Delivery and Goody, both started by former Lala Move executives in 2021, are Porter's direct competitors and gaining ground. Logistics giant Delivery also has announced its plan to foray into on-demand logistics. What could benefit Porter though, is that it is a two-sided marketplace with network effects that cannot be replicated easily by new players. It is difficult to change people's habits in the SME world, and Porter will be the benefactors of that. 
it will take a lot more dollars to take away both the customers and the supply from them. Today, Porto claims to have over 500,000 driver partners and more than 10 million customers on its platform. The company more than doubled its revenue from operations to 1,754 crores in 2022-23, while keeping their losses largely in check at Rs. 175 crores. On-demand marketplaces are brutal. Many new age businesses operate in this new paradigm and the most important aspect is getting the right liquidity. That is, when you open the app, you get supply and the other way around. Once that equilibrium is achieved and sustainably maintained, there's no stopping the business. And the fact that Porter has been at it for more than eight years gives them a massive head start. And that's it from me. Hope you learned something valuable today. If you did, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for more startup related value content. And until next time.